This is practice A for section 2.1. They ask you to sketch the next figure in the pattern. So you're using inductive reasoning to figure out what comes next. So I kind of have that diagram there for you. That's what your answer should look like. We're starting with a 2 by 2 by 2 triangle, if you will. There's two dots on this side, two dots on this side, two dots on that side. Then we move into 3, 3, 3. Four, 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 five, five, five. Number two is the same kind of deal, except the middle is open. So you still have your two on each side, your three on each side, your four on each side, and your five on each side, but nothing in the middle. Number three, we're rotating this figure a little bit each time. So when we rotate this guy that same direction, that same clockwise direction, we end up looking like that. Number four, we start by shading this guy, and then we move to the left and shade this one. So we're moving counterclockwise, shade this one, so you end up there. Number five, you start with this figure, and then you turn into this figure where you're adding a little square each time, but shading the previous diagram. So add a square onto this one, shade what you see previous. Add one onto here, shade what you see previous. So you should end up with something that looks like that. In number six, we're started with a shaded square, then we put a circle in it that isn't shaded, then you put a square into that that is, circle that isn't, square that is. Number seven, you got these pentagons, and you have this little shaded circle that's kind of moving around in a clockwise fashion, but you're skipping a vertex each time. So if you're here, you're jumping this guy to go to here. Numbers 8 and 9, the first four objects in a pattern are shown. How many squares are there in the next object? So just count your squares. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. That's how many should be in the next shape. You don't actually have to draw it. You can find the pattern without drawing it. Same thing here. We have 1, 3, 6, 10. We're going up by 2, then by 3, then by 4. So we're going to go up by 5. That's why you get 15 there. This is the back of the worksheet. They want you to describe a pattern in the numbers. Write the next number in the pattern. So make sure you use inductive reasoning to say what the pattern is. And then you're just finding the next number in each pattern. Okay. So these first five aren't that difficult. Number 15 is not that difficult either. But you might have trouble putting into words what you're going to do to get the next term. We're alternating from positive to negative, positive to negative. So you know your next term is going to be positive. If you just discount the positives and the negatives for a second, it looks like you're multiplying by 3. Okay, So we're doing something with multiplication and 3. How do you get the signs to change? Multiply by negative 3. So obviously your next term is going to be positive. Just multiply that guy by 3. So you should get positive 243. Number 16 and 17, they ask you to complete the conjecture based on the pattern you observe in the specific cases. So use the following products of odd integers to complete the conjecture about the product of any two odd numbers. Product means multiply. So you're multiplying two odd numbers, and notice what you end up with. The product of any two odd integers is an odd number. Number 17, they ask you to complete the following table, then complete the conjecture that follows. So they're giving you pairs of odd numbers, 
they want you to sum the numbers and then divide by 2. So 3 plus 5 is 8, divided by 2 is 4. 5 plus 7 is 12, divided by 2 is 6. I think you see a pattern already. 7 plus 9 is 16, divided by 2 is 8. 9 plus 11 is 20, divided by 2 is 10. So a conjecture you could make here would be the average of any two consecutive odd whole numbers is... Now you could say a bunch of things here. You could say it's even. You could also say it's... the even number between them. There you go. So notice how you have 1 and 3. What's the even number that's between them? 2. 3 and 5. What's the even number between them? 4. 6 is between 5 and 7. 8 is between 7 and 9. 10 is between 9 and 11. So just saying an even number isn't wrong, but that's probably better.